Welcome to the World Series of Fighting 12 conference call. During the call, if you would like to ask a question, you may do so by pressing star and then one on your telephone keypad. I will now turn the call over to your host, Danny Brenner. Hey, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us and welcome everybody to the WSOS 12 Palomino versus Gonzalez Media Conference call. Uh, this event, as you may already know, takes place a week from Saturday on August 9th at the Joint in the Hard Rock Hotel Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, as usual, our five fight main card will be live on NBCSN at 10 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and you can also catch a four, four fight undercard at NBCSports.com or WSOF.com. Uh, this was a fight, this is a fight card that underwent a lot of shuffling due to injuries, and I, I think that the resulting matchups are going to make for some excellent fights. On this morning's call, we've got World Series of Fighting President Ray Seppo. Elvis Mikopchich and his opponent, Kelvin Tiller, who will be scoring off in 195-pound catchweight attraction. Light heavyweights, Pawnee Marcus and Coley Butterfield. And our lightweight main event fighters, Luis Palomino and Luis Gonzalez. I'm actually not sure if Luis Palomino has made it onto the call at this point, um, but Luis Gonzalez is here. Uh, the other fights on the main card who will not be joining us on today's Call are uh, Alexis Villa and Brandon Heppelman, and also Bryson Hansen versus Matt Sales. Now, before we open it for questions, which you can ask by pressing star one on your keypad, um, I'm going to turn the call over to Ray Seppo, our president, for some opening comments. Ray? Thanks, Danny. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, again, thank you for being here this morning for WSOS 12. Uh, another exciting card, like Danny said earlier, uh, we've had some, you know, uh, due to injuries, a lot of changes, but uh, we've ended up with an amazing uh, lineup uh, headlining uh, as Luis Palomino versus uh, Luis Gonzalez. Um, again, thank you for being on this call. Um, going through the main card, <clears throat> we have two young studs. Uh, Bryson Henson and Matt Sellers, who uh, will be opening our main card for August 9th. Um, both of these guys are uh, gifted athletes and fighters. Uh, they're both very good on the ground. Uh, they're both very good uh, on their feet. Um, Bryson Henson, he said his goal is, just like everybody else's goal, and that's to... Um, <clears throat> be the 135 division um, world champion for WSLF. Uh, Matt, his last two outings has been two knockouts, and both of those knockouts combined uh, within two minutes, so he didn't even finish around. Um, Alex Vila uh, versus Brando Hebelman, uh, two great fighters, uh, Alex Vila uh, being a two-time Freestyle world champion and bronze medalist in the 96 Olympics. Uh, his last outing here won, and again, another great wrestler, great MMA fighter. Brendan Hillman, uh, his last outing uh, with, well, his outing with um, Marlon Reyes champion, he showed uh, what he's made of. Big heart. Uh, again, another great fighter, and he looks to uh, get back into their uh, lineup of uh, contending for the title again. Uh, moving forward, uh, Alvis um, Tuskic uh, versus <clears throat> Calvin Tiller. Um, both these guys are, again, uh, very good on their feet, um, very good on the ground, and um, they look to you know showcase and, and obviously move up the line for that title shot as well. And our co-main is uh, Horny Marcus versus Curly Butterfield. Um, both of these guys, obviously, uh, are both coming for a title shot as well. Um, and, I mean, that's going to be an exciting But Again, uh, moving to our main event, uh, everybody knows uh, <clears throat> Luis Palomino is the type of guy that comes out and he just, uh, let it all hang out. He swings full of fences and um, 
They say, you know, as much as say, he's a black belt jiu-jitsu guy, he's a good wrestler, but he doesn't get the same satisfaction as in knocking somebody out. So, which makes it for an exciting fight because Luis Gonzalez is also that kind of guy. He's a grinder. He compares himself to, or likes to be compared to the likes of the greats, Randy Couture and Charles Sondland, that kind of um, game that he brings to the table is, uh, grind, 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 and um, get that finisher win. Uh, already he's looking at, uh, says if he wins this, he's looking for a title shot. Uh, I mean, you know, again, another exciting card. I'm excited about it. Um, I hope that uh, you uh, are not tuning in be at uh, the Hard Rock to uh, view it live and enjoy the show. Uh, in closing, thank you again, everybody. Thank you to NBC, IMG, our partners around the world, uh, our team, my PR staff, our team here at Rochester Fighting in the office, and I'll hand it back to you, Danny. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ray. Now, uh, I'm going to start it off with a couple questions for each fighter, and as I said before and as Maggie mentioned, if you have questions for the fighters, please go ahead and press star one on your keypad, and we will recognize your question. Um, but in starting, I'd like to ask Luis Gonzalez, um, you know, you made a big splash in your WSOS debut with the win over longtime bet Antonio McKee. Um, you're undefeated. What do you think the key to your success has been through the first nine fights of your career? Uh, I just feel like, uh, you know, um, just my hard work and just uh, obviously just, um, just having the mentality of just, like like uh, Ray was saying, I like you know to be known as a grinder in my wrestling and just um, just having more heart than my opponents. I feel I feel like I just uh, keep the pace longer than they do, and um, no matter what happens, um, I just uh, I just keep going forward. And uh, I don't know. I just think just the, my my mental toughness is uh, what's uh, kept me undefeated so far. Great. And then you know Melvin Gillard's fighting champion Justin Gaethje next in the lightweight division. But do you feel like an impressive victory here should guarantee you a shot at the winner of that fight? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I was already offered the fight back in January, and, you know, getting ready for that one. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I got injured. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I could see why, you know, they're putting uh, Melvin, you know, and, and Gagey against the title. But I feel, you know, with a win, you know, next weekend, um, I think that would put me, you know, next in line for that title shot for whoever wins that fight. Great. Thank you very much. And and we have Francisco France is actually here. Um he's translating for Honey Marcus and Francisco. Uh que question for, for Honey. Uh Honey, you're you're part of a famous team with several great fighters. Uh who who serves as your primary training partners and does working with such a great team, what does that offer you? Honey, uh sorry, can you repeat yourself again? Yeah, you are. You train with a very famous team of great fighters. Who serves as your perm, or as your primary training partners? And you know what is working with such a great team offer you? Okay, é que você treina com pessoal de alto nível, entendeu? Com um time que tem muita gente é, dura e quem como você está treinando para esse camp e como é que tipo está se sentindo? Olha aqui, esse camp eu fiz aqui na minha cidade, o meu professor, o meu professor já em é E assim, o camp não tem tanta gente de nome, mas tem tantos caras conhecidos internacionalmente, mas tem caras muito duros, é, tanto quanto os caras em nome da Nova União lá no Rio. O Tu, é, Kick France, o Felipe, o Felipão, fala da galera, o Caião, então são promessas que vão surgir aí é, no cenário internacional em breve. Ok, ele disse, this camp I didn't do in real. I did it in uh, this camp I did uh, in Natal uh, with my first coach, uh, Jair Lorenzo. I didn't have that many uh, big names to train this time, but I, I did have a lot of great training partners, guys like uh, uh, George Rodriguez, uh, Felipe Lins, Caio Magalhães, uh, Kiko France. So uh, I just I feel just great as I, when I'm going and do my training camp in Rio. Awesome. And one more question. Um, you know, you've been through some tough times with this freak car accident. Uh, how important is it, do you feel, to pick up a win right here? 
é que você, nas últimas três lutas, teve problema, teve cara acidente. Qual, qual a importância dessa luta para você? Essa luta aí é uma motivação mais para mim poder voltar e dar a volta por, por cima e é, fazer uma grande luta com voltar com vitória para dar um, um, um ponto pré inicial no, na carreira e abrir a sequência de longas vitórias. Você diz que ele está realmente motivado para essa luta. Uh, he forget about his loss, last loss. He just think about this fight. He think it's a great opportunity for him uh, to put a good fight on this show, a good show, and uh, uh, start winning fights again. That's his goal. Great. Thank you. And I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that Luis Palomino has joined our call. Uh, Luis, one quick question for you. Uh, you've been fighting professionally since 2006, but fighting for WSOF, that was really the first time you were featured on the national stage. What's the opportunity to fight on such a big platform meant for you? Well, you know, first of all, I'm grateful that, you know, the WSF made me the main event uh, for this uh, WSF 12. Um, I think it's one, you know, one of the biggest opportunities in my life is to show, you know, a greater amount of people know who I am and what I've been doing for the last seven years of my life. You know, I mean, uh, I've been, you know, I've been working my, my butt off, you know, for this. And, and finally, you know, I get a, a chance to, to show, you know, a lot of people, you know, what I've been doing, you know. Great. Moving over to uh, to Marcus's opponent, Coley Butterfield. Um, you started out just three and two in your career, but in your last eleven fights, you you went on a tear at ten and one. What what clicked for you there? What what changed? Um. Well, you know, my first couple fights, uh, I was just training out of the wrestling room up where I went to college at Itasca, and uh, I didn't really have any really good coaches. I mean, the guy that was running it pretty much just watched UFC and took uh, advice from them, like, you know, what happened on the show. So uh, eventually I moved to Rufusport, and I was training there full-time, and that's kind of what it did for me, uh, the good training, the good coaches. Um, I actually became a full mixed martial artist instead of just, uh, you know, a dumb wrestler with no hands. So that's really what uh, made the difference in my game. Great. Thank you. Uh, Elvis and Top Kitch. Kelvin Tiller, he's a newcomer in the promotion. Have you been, have you been able to study his game in preparation for this fight, and and what have you what have you made of that? Well, I, I don't I don't try to look into too much into the fighters, uh, you know, because fighters evolve all the time. But you know, you I pick up on his general habits, you know, on things he's very good at. He's very explosive. He's young. He's hungry. He's undefeated. You know, and when you got a Young and the Peter guy, you know, uh, um, they have a little bit less fear, um, which can be, which is good for them and bad for them at the same time. And uh, I mean, that, that, that's about basically. It. I mean, he's just a good, explosive guy that's uh, pretty well rounded, and uh, he brings it, you know. So uh, we'll see about uh, we'll see about clashing a little bit there. Right. And for, for your opponent, Kelvin, you've actually said that you don't like to study your opponents. What's what's your logic there, and, and have you made any changes for this fight with it being such a big opportunity? Oh uh, no, I don't like to study uh, my opponents. Uh, if you look at all my fights, um, I've switched my style up in uh, mostly all six of my fights. Uh, some fights I, I pressure people a lot and use a lot of takedowns. Sometimes I. Uh, Sit on the outside, use jabs and kicks. So uh, I don't know. I just felt like if I can do it, anybody can do it. And um, you know, this is a great opportunity for me. I've been training really, really hard, and I'm just happy. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with everything. Great. Now we're going to open the call up to uh, questions with the media. Um, Maggie, if you want to turn it over. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, you may do so by pressing star and then one on your telephone keypad. And our first question comes from the line of Dan Plasma with Full Contact Fighter. Your line is live. Yeah, the question for Letha Lewis. You're facing a very heavy-handed opponent. How do you neutralize or get around that power and implement your game? And where do you see holes in Babone's game? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he's a very heavy-handed uh, guy. I've seen, you know, I've watched a couple of his fights. You know, his hands are dangerous. Um, just, you know, I just got to play it smart and um, keep my range, you know. The, the one thing that I noticed, you know, um, even in the fights that he's won by knockout is that uh, even before he ended up knocking the guy out, he's gotten taken down a couple times, you know, just uh, – because, you know, he swings for the fences, you know. If he lands those punches, you know, those are devastating. But the uh, thing is, when he misses, he leaves himself open for takedowns. And, uh, and most of the fights where I've seen where he even, 
wins by knockout, he gets stuck down, and I feel like I'm a stronger wrestler than uh, most of the guys that he's fun. Cool. And a quick question for uh, for Luis Palomino. Uh, Baboon, you know, when you hit the pads, you have such great speed, and when you knock guys out, it's these wild swinging punches. Are you going to adjust your game at all to deal with such a dangerous wrestler? Definitely. The game has been adjusted. Yeah, you know, we've seen the, the – when I get a little bit overexcited with myself, when I'm in my strike, and I really, you know, I really enjoy, you know, what I do. So um, I get caught up on it. But uh, we've been working definitely on it. I mean, if he's if he's going to be just waiting for me to miss, man, it's, it's going to be a very short night. Accuracy is on point. I've been getting ready, I've been getting ready for his fight for almost like seven months. You know, there is no off-season for me. I've been getting on this. I've been working on this, you know, ever since my last fight. And uh, the game was only improved. You know, I've been facing wrestlers at the beginning of my career. You know, I've said it once. I've said I'll say it again. You know, he, he's, he's a talented fighter. I respect him, but he's not bringing anything new to the table. All right. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. Our next question comes from the line of Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Your line is live. Hi. Uh, thank you for the time. My first question is for Elvis Masopchik. Um, I was wondering, with the loss that you had to Jesse Taylor, what you learned from that and how you changed your approach coming into this fight? Oh, I, I made I a made few... Uh, um, few mistakes, you know, coming up, leading up to that fight. Uh, I changed my style. I changed a few things that worked for me. Uh, I put on a little bit too much size. Uh, I was, there was a lot of, a lot of mistakes, you know, that I made in that fight and uh, throughout the training camp. Uh, I just didn't have the urgency. I didn't have, uh, I, I didn't think he would be able to control me the way he did on the ground. And, um, uh, I, I learned a lesson the hard way. Um, I, uh, I improved my wrestling quite a bit, I believe. Uh, you know, I just improved my game all the way around. Uh, and uh, this is the first time in my career that I was uh, I was able to train um, most of the most of the training camp full time, four to five, without working a full time job. Um, I feel like, I, you know, with just that right there, I feel like I mean, I'm, uh, I'm like five years younger. Uh, I just feel like my uh, my will for it and, and uh, gas tank for it is. Is a lot deeper than it was before, and uh, it's just it's just fixed a little hole that that, that I had, that I made in that fight, and uh, I'll go from there. Thank you. And just to follow up, also, how has the change of opponent affected you, if at all? I mean, you're I guess the smaller of the fighters coming in, being that Tiller usually fights at like heavyweight. Do you find that to be an advantage or a disadvantage fighting at the catchweight? Well, you know, it, it's. You know, since Tiller was training for a 205 fight, and I was, you know, for 185, um, he's going to be, he's probably going to have size on me, which, you know, when I know from personal experience, more size you have on, the faster you start slowing down. I should be the faster fighter. I should be, you know, a guy with, you know, and I'm cutting a lot less weight than he is. So um, I should have a lot for a gas tank. Uh, it didn't really affect me greatly. I don't, like I said earlier, I don't, I look at some things off, you know, from a fighter, you know, look when I look at her videos. But all in all together, you know, it, it really didn't change my game plan a whole lot. Thank you. And for Luis Gonzalez, how do you feel about putting your undefeated record on the line against a, a veteran of the game? Um, yeah, I mean, it's something different from my last fight. You know, I had another veteran with the same similar record. But, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, the pressure builds, I think, slowly a little bit every time, especially being on a big stage, you know, just having that zero in the loss column. But once you get in the cage, it all goes away, and all every fight's the same. Once, you know, the, the nerves are up a little bit more. But, like I said, once the fight starts and you get in there, it all goes away. So pressure's all off then. And last question is for uh, Ray Seffel, please. Uh, Yushin Okami, I believe, was rumored to fight on this card, but obviously there was the location switch. So I was wondering when fans can expect to see him fight in the World Series of Fighting again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Yushin Okami will be uh, fighting October 24th um, um, against uh, David Branch. Uh, which will be a great fight and uh, another great project to forward to. That's right for the title then. That is correct. 
Great. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Jason Floyd with the MMAReport.com. Your line is live. Yes, uh, my questions will be for both for Ray Seppo. Ray, uh, Gonzalez was supposed to be fighting for the title back in January when he did the inaugural title shot. Is he still fighting for a title shot, and, and does the same kind of play out for uh, Paul Mio? Absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously that title that title uh, has already been uh, named a, a another opponent, meaning Justin Cage will be facing Marvin Galar. Uh, but absolutely, these two guys uh, again. Uh, Luis Gonzalez was uh, given that opportunity. He got injured. Uh, he pulls off a win here. But it goes for both fighters. Uh, whoever wins this fight um, should be in line to fight uh, the winner of uh, Jason Cagey and Melvin Galan. One of the hot topics right now, Ray, in, in mixed martial arts is about the enhanced drug testing that is going on. Uh, from your view as a promoter, what, what are your thoughts uh, at what you know, a state like Nevada is doing with out-of-competition drug testing? Sorry, uh, ask that question again. What's your thoughts on the out-of-competition drug testing and the enhanced drug testing that Nevada is doing uh, from a promoter side of things? I, I think it's a great thing. I mean, you know, obviously we want to keep the sport clean and we want everybody to compete on the same level and same platform. I mean, it's uh, it's a bit unfair when someone is on something else and somebody is natural. So uh, I think it's a good thing that they uh, really – you know, uh, nailing down and 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 doing these drug, drug tests so that uh, the platform is the same for everybody. Cool. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from the line of Caleb Leslie with MMAsucka.com. Your line is live. Hi there. Thank you very much for the time. Uh, I wanted to ask Connie. Uh, about the decision to move back up to 205. What is it that's influenced the decision? Is it a lot to do with missing weight in this last fight? And how he feels at the new weight? Hello? 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 Who, who was that? Yeah, it was for Francisco oh, for, for, for Honey Marcus. Yeah. Okay, can you can you ask again, please? Sorry, yes. The question for for Honey was, uh, what, what influenced his decision to move back up to two hundred five? Was it purely to do with missing weight in the last fight, and how does he feel uh, at the new weight the new weight class? Honey, na última luta você não conseguiu bater o peso no oito quatro e agora você vai lutar na dois zero cinco. Como é que você está sentindo nessa categoria? Unfortunately, on my last fight, I couldn't make the weight, but uh, to make a 205, it's not going to be hard at all for me. I'm already close to make that weight, so I'm going to be super strong for this fight, and uh, I can't wait. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to ask a couple of quick questions to Ray. Uh, Ray, one of the things that people have asked me to, to ask you is about international expansion and getting World Series of Fighting uh, on television in more countries, particularly in the U.K. Are there any plans to, to bring World Series of Fighting television to, to the U.K. in the near future? Uh, yes, that is in the works. Um, uh, you know, right now we're we're live in we're in over 80 countries, but we're live to 40 countries and delayed, uh, I think, uh, eight hours or so in the other 40 or so countries. Uh, but yes, we are IMG and our team are working uh, to make sure that uh, all the uh, countries are covered uh, again. Um, that I think that's just a matter of time. We're just in the midst of finalizing certain uh, countries as we move forward. Perfect. And the other, only other quick question I have is: uh, fight your pay is obviously a continuing topic in MMA, and, and all of MMA uh, fans are talking about it. Do you know what the lowest payout for a fighter uh, appearance fee is going to be for this show? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I didn't catch that. So do you know what the lowest fighter purse is going to be on this show? I, 
Right? For, sure. For some reason, I don't understand the question. I'm, I'm asking about a fighter pay and the, and this, the appearance fees, the salaries that you pay to the fighters. What would be the lowest salary paid to a fighter on this card? What is the lowest? Yes. Um, I can't uh, disclose that information. I'm sure you will know that uh, when uh, the time uh, when the actual pay is being released by the commission, I guess. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have no further questions. Thank you at this time. I'm sorry, we did just receive one more question from the line of Stephen Maraca with MMAJunkie.com. Your line is live. Hey, Ray. Um, I'm just um, curious as to uh, how you felt about the uh, the last show, your guys' network television debut uh, on NBC. What sort of lessons did you take from that experience and sort of things that you walked away from it, uh, you know, ideas that you might improve, uh, improve on or to make the show better and the flow a little bit better. Um, just overall, can you give me your impressions of that at that event and what you took away from it? Uh, yes, uh, I, we were, I mean, I was very excited of the outcome of the show. We had an amazing show. Uh, and obviously, you know, I think if anything, the credit goes to uh, my team here at Wizards of Fighting from – from our PR team to our, you know, team in the office to our production team to NBC, IMG. I think everybody in a combined effort, everybody put in the work, and uh, uh, the outcome of that was, in, uh, was a great show. So all in all, I was really happy with the, the, the whole outcome of the show. And, um, you know, obviously moving forward, we continue to learn from the little things that, uh, that we need to improve on. What do you think those, those things are at this point? Um, I mean, just real minor things, uh, like sometimes, uh, you know, security, uh, the sitting of uh, certain uh, VIPs and so on. No, I mean, real minor things. Other than that, um, all in all, I thought the whole show was, it was a great show. How was it working with NBC? And, and did they have a, a say in how you produced the show? Did you work with them? And what was the split of the, uh, of the input into how the show was uh, – was put on. Uh, the, uh, the partnership with NBC is nothing but great. Um, can't thank them enough uh, again for believing in what we do. Um, uh, Tupelo Honey is our production team that uh, that was also with NBC have done programming for NBC. So uh, these guys are nothing but the best in the business, and so uh, NBC is very happy with that, and so are we. What did they say about the ratings that you guys drew? I guess you averaged nine hundred six thousand, which was uh, a lot, a lot more than than the average for that time slot. Right, that, that's correct. I mean, they're happy, we're happy, and uh, again, we're moving forward and and uh, continue to get better. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And we have no further questions in queue at this time. All right, great. Thank you, everybody. I wanted to thank all the fighters and the media for joining us on this call. Um, once again, the fight takes place a week from Saturday, August 9th, to the joint, the Hard Rock in Las Vegas. Uh, we'll be live on NBCSN at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, um, with uh, four fight undercard on NBCSports.com. Tickets are still available uh, at access.com, ASS.com for $39. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I will go ahead and end the call now. That concludes today's conference. You may now disconnect your lines.